Sometimes pro professional athletes also f up. Panic. Magnus comes by. I was like, f <laughs> you had the f chance to win. Yeah, now I get into the bad mental state. Holy, f there was a lot of people. <laughs> Holy shit, this is gonna be a tough one. Adrenaline pumping through my veins, can't relax, original I am not the same as these cats I sting them if they never ever mind and they beeswax I don't ever cap, but I'm wearing like three hats Never been a rat, but I know where the cheese at You'll never get a trophy cause they all here where we at You better believe that When it's all said and done, I still be here standing Never took a loss and it ain't something that I'm planning I dare you to say something, my focus is A1 Every dog has his day, it's been mine since day one This is real grind and I'm still climbing Why you still trying? I'm still shining It's real blinding And I'm getting hotter too Talking top two I'm not a two You let the pressure bother you And I do what I gotta do Let's go home Coming close to me, flow is on atomic. I'm starting fires through poetry. The heart is out, staying loyal, no falling out. And if you step into the court, be ready, we balling out. Yeah, the coldest of teens, they know what we bring, don't try us. They know in between, we go for these dreams in silence. Hard work, don't mistake it for magic. We've been shooting in the gym, this is targeting practice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm just getting started, getting feet wet. It's all in repetition, ain't a secret All facts, all black dress code Pay me my respect, collect and never regret oh. Go hard! <laughs> it hurts even more to say it <laughs> I'll just, uh, viewer discretion It hurts a bit right now hmm. So, uh, yeah it's kind of difficult to put into words. But I woke up at, uh, what was it, three? Of course I was uh, hella nervous and uh, that kind of, kind of normal mental state you get into in, in the morning pre-race. I got up, got my, uh, my stuff and we drove to um, a swim start. And seriously, this is where every like wrath is just different from every other race um you feel it's it's small moments that just kind of confirms that you know insanity that is challenge wrath um got down there and the first thing i see is felix uh the the race director giving me a big hug um and it might sound uh, weird but it's it's stuff like that. I'm I'm not used to stuff like that. And professional athletes, it's triathletes are not used to stuff like that. You just feel welcomed. You feel you feel like you're appreciated for actually being there. And for me, at least, it creates some kind of eager to really perform and deliver a show. Um, not only for my own sake, but especially also from for all the. The people who invest their time um, in making this happen got down there, wrecked my bike, made sure everything was aligned, and um, and then I got nervous. <laughs> you know, you start all of a sudden you start looking around and you feel the tension between athletes, and it's just special. Um, it's so unique the way. Pre a big race, you're just you're so nervous. You could cut through it with a knife, like the tension in the in the air. And for many years, I um, I don't know if you say control yourself in that situation. Um, I didn't really like it. Now that's the stuff I thrive off. Uh, it's weird how 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 it can change in that in that way because I'm I'm very much just aware of the fact that that's why I do triathlon on this level. It's to compete at those events. Mm. Got all on my, my race suit and my, my uh, wetsuit, went in 
the canal for a warm-up swim. Swam out a little bit just to have a look over the situa situation of the start. And then you just see people there. Holy fuck, there was a lot of people. <laughs> oh, and, uh, and that was w when it hit like this is just different. Um, that was cool. Mm. And, um, you know, I swam back. We uh, got guided up, called into the water again, the, the former presentation. And I went to the far right. The gun went. And um, I felt immediately it was difficult to kind of just create that kind of kick that I usually have in the water in the beginning. Uh, usually I, my takeout speed is quite good. And I did not really feel that this time. Instantly I got some kind of, uh, it, it's just a strange feeling of like, I, I got nervous if I was actually ready. Um, but in that moment I was really good at just like catching myself, not falling into that like kind of questioning yourself um, mantra, but more there's nothing I can do about it. I can, other than just stick to my... Um, plan and stick to uh, it doesn't really matter how it feels what matters is that I do what I was set out to do and I did and I thought we had a pretty good like I think Sam took the first 400 meters and then from that I took the next 1500 and then you know then it was kind of back and forth um, people, people took pulls and stuff we, we get like pretty far out the, the canal and still breathing to, to the right and then you just you start to notice what you actually like see out of your glasses and not just because you're kind of that focused you, you only see like this and then there's just people standing in five line rows like looking at us swimming and it's like we you know we, usually we just swim out in the sea do some kind of loop come back and there are people are watching us cheering yelling Oh, that was sick. Does it give you extra, like, almost energy? 100%. In the swim? 100%. Mm -hmm. The problem was that um, that we didn't really create any separation. So, uh, you know, it's just that kind of the takeout speed just have to be way higher. Uh, so, so we can create that kind of separation um, that we wanted. Um, getting into the into transition, you, um, I was just in the zone, you know, as quick as possible getting the bike, on the bike, get going. Um, 10 minutes in, five minutes in, I don't know, Magnus comes by and I was like, fuck. <laughs> Holy shit, this is gonna be a tough one. Um, and I'm pretty sure Sam thought the same. Uh, so it was just, um, basically I just made the decision to, to you know, race, um, went with him him and Sam, and uh, I, I felt like uh, I got my legs ripped off <laughs> a couple of times, but I was there and I thought like, okay, it's probably just gonna be a couple of more minutes uh, of intense hurt, and then, uh, and then we'll take it down a notch. Um, and that moment did not really come. Um, I was like, you know, in, in one way it was like, you you question if he can actually push that amount of watts for the whole 180. At the same time, you're like, no, he can't. You just have to be extremely, extremely arrow and push as hard as possible right now. Yeah, the first hour was just pure mayhem, uh, but also kind of nice, to be honest. Uh, it was nice to be in the mix and we got to Solar Hill. Your instant thought is like, okay, shit, Traffin is not supposed to be like this. But then again, triathlon is supposed to be like this. It's, it is kind of, it's a strange way of like, it's the coolest thing I've ever tried in my career by miles and miles and miles. Like, I've never tried anything like it. It's so special. Um, not, and I, I bet it's not only for athletes riding there, it's also for people just like spectating. Uh, I told my parents that that's the place they had to go to just to experience that and they were also like blown away um, 
people are so close. It's like watching the outdoors, like it um, when they do it in the Tour de France, and you know you're right, you're riding there, and it's like, is he gonna move? And it's just last minute they just move. You just have to trust the fact that they will move. <laughs> That's sick. Um, I have a shot of you, like just yelling something do you have any idea like what kind of things you were yelling or the feeling you were feeling as you swim? euphoria pure euphoria like yeah. uh i couldn't feel my legs <laughs> it was it was really cool um i really enjoyed it and it, that's one thing uh, that would i'm 100 percent sure that feeling of riding there will st like stick with me forever and I'm pretty sure Simon also, Simon Gale also took a quite sick shot of me riding there and I'm gonna frame it and <laughs> I need it, I need it in my, somewhere in my house because I think it's, it's, it's one of those moments that it's just, it's really important uh, just to remind yourself like what triathlon actually is and what it means to you and that's one of the moments that really means a lot to me. Um, Road to the top and um, couldn't uh, shift to the big ring. Panic. Uh, stopped to the side, tried to get the front derail off. Um, but of course, you need a chain cutter for that, and I didn't have one. Uh, so like fuck because I was like okay I can just take like bring the chain to the to the big ring and then just ride on the big ring from that on that point on uh, spend some minutes there and um, then I rode Patrick and Ben came past I think three minutes after so I rode with those guys for some time but it was like it was annoying because I couldn't I was uh, stuck in the in the small ring. Um, I was like, okay, I have to fix it, this at, at some point. So I asked for a mechanic. One of the motorbikes that came past, I asked, okay, so where can I find a mechanic? And he said, over here. And I got some help at, at the mechanic. And it was like, I was standing there like two minutes uh, away from total, or 20 seconds total away from total mental breakdown while uh yeah we tried to sol solve it it was pretty tough um fixed it though and it was just when joe skibber he came past with uh whatever group he was in and then i could ride with those guys for the rest of the way and it was like constant I i'm 100 percent sure that if i if it hadn't been uh i'm not 100 percent, but i'm pretty sure that if it hadn't been rough uh, I would have uh, freaked out more. It's strange how when, when you have a race like Roth, first of all, I've spent my the whole first part of the season trying to get as fit as possible and as ready as possible for Roth. At the same time, it's like you come there and the atmosphere is fucking nuts and you are like, you know, there's so many volunteers. There's You really like see how much uh, that that is around this race and how triathlon crazy all the people there actually like the cheers and everything and then it's like it's not a, even a question in your mind about dropping out i wrote with the guys um in the sixth pack or whatever got off the the bike in the t2 felt the uh, cramps and when i tried to put on my shoes um from riding in overgear and um i was like oh are you kidding me this but then again i was like oh but it's, it can always get worse so <laughs> like just go for it uh fuck it um and I, my instant thought was like okay patrick is probably gonna aim for a sub 230 so i'm just gonna run run 229 I know that sounds weird to you guys, but that's how my brain works. So <laughs> I was like, I'm just going to set out in the, I don't know, 233 pace and just hold it as long as possible. And so I did. Um, went well 
until it really didn't anymore. Wheels fell off. I thought I could maybe catch uh, Ben. Turned out it was a little bit too fast of a pace going out. Uh, yeah. But then again, who the fuck cares? So, uh, yeah, now I get into the bad mental state. Even though there were so many people there cheering for you on the run course, it was, I, uh, I was running more with anger than I was running, you know, on motivation or, yeah, as it normally is. And then the wheels came off when there was like 12 Ks to go. Um, tried to hold it together, but yeah, couldn't really. So um, yeah, reached the finish line and that was, uh, it was one part really special because there, it's a huge stadium where there's like, I don't know, 10,000 people. And it seems like there's all national stadium in there um, cheering for you and high, like music and all that. And it's very emotional. I remember thinking when I reached the stadium, uh, like, you had the fucking chance to win. I know, Ma I know Magnus, he had a great day out there. And I don't know if, like, it could probably not be enough for a win, but just contest, that would, uh, just had a, just, just to have a race where it didn't go wrong. That's the most, like, and yeah, uh, as all of you uh, keyboard warriors down, uh, out there, uh, it was the battery that, uh, that uh, was not fully charged. And, um, you know, I can sit here and come with uh, a million different uh, excuses of why that didn't happen. But, uh, you know, sometimes professional athletes also fuck up. So the whole the whole experience though, is it has it added to the fire of it just shows you even more how much you would just want to go back there and smash it. That was my f I remember though I said I told Belinda Granger, who is kind of a, a professional athlete uh, responsible, uh, make it happen next year because I want to come back. Um, it's a, it's definitely without a question the long distance ra distance race. I have the most fire and the most like motivation to uh, to race and uh, and like e the, you know the hunger and the eager to win. Or partly because I think it's a beautiful race. Uh, the course is yeah fantastic. The atmosphere is insane. Um, and also I've seen how much it's actually been quite nice to see Magnus in a, he feels at home there. Mm. It's quite, it's quite, uh, you know, it's quite cool to see. And it's also, uh, it's crazy to see the difference from like normal races to Roth for him. Um, yeah. So where are we headed? We're headed to the prize ceremony. Apparently fourth place also gets uh, gets a spot on the podium. So <laughs> yeah, we're uh, we're gonna have some fun at the finish line. One thing that makes uh, Chance Roth stand out uh, is the fact that they have more volunteers in the transition zone than most other races have in their whole race. Like they, there's so many volunteers there. Even my home state, amazing people. Um, 
you just want to give something back. And I don't, of course I can race well and then I can give something back in that sense, but that also, you know, it's kind of a cliche to say. Um, so all of the professionals are invited to the volunteer party where there's like thousands of volunteers sitting there in the big tent and we stand on the stage and I had massive chills. Like it's insane how, it's just a culture. It's the culture of love for the sport, love for the, the professional athletes, uh, admiration. Um, and at the same time, we are standing up there on the scene like, wow. Um, you feel like a small person, you know, uh, standing up there like, uh, we know that this would not happen if it wasn't for those guys. And then they are still cheering for us. Like we are the ones who are supposed to cheer for them. Thanks for watching. And especially thank you for all the support. I really appreciate it. And uh, I hope you'll like and subscribe, all that shit. Um, I love you guys.